It's time for this week's Uplift. Three ordinary guys that want you to find the freedom that is available by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. So sit back and enjoy Uplift, brought to you by the Fulcrum Center. Visit our site at thefulcrumcenter.org. Well, good evening, everybody. And as you can see, there's no Chad Farmer, but, but we found our regular <laughs> cast of characters here. They're probably all saying, we want Chad, yeah, we want Chad. You yeah. guys did great. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, awesome. Yeah, we'd love your feedback. I mean, Chad and I had a great time. It was the Chad and Chad show. And no, this is not ESPN. This is the Fulcrum, <laughs> this is presented by the Fulcrum Center. So, uh, yeah, but we had a good time, and we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, so we got uh, Phil and Ian back here, and uh, we're looking forward to bringing you another good uh, discussion tonight. And I think this is going yeah. to get real. I think, I think so. so, too. And I think it's Great. going to be good. Uh, and it's going to be good for us and hopefully mm-hmm. good for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we are going to talk about speaking to your mountains. Yep. And <laughs> off, great. Yeah, so and off camera, we were each talking about some mountains that we're dealing with this week. And, and um there's a lot of power in speaking to your mountain, mm-hmm. but there's also, I don't know if it's a spiritual law or there's a there's a, a thing that I didn't know that we'll probably get into about the way that you pray into it and how you do it to achieve the best result. Mm-hmm. So, I think we will. Yeah. Well, let me read the scripture. Yeah. This um, comes from... Mark, and I can't remember exactly where, Mark eleven twenty three, And this is from the New International Version. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Amen. I particularly emphasize the part, does not doubt in their heart. Not because I don't doubt, because I have doubts all the time, Mm -hmm. but Jesus was very specific. If you say to this mountain, uproot yourself and throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart that it will happen, then it will happen. So I got a question. Why are the mountains still standing and not in the sea? (laughs) <laughs> that is a good question. I mean, hasn't anybody at least tried? <laughs> but then again, at the same time, I got to follow that up with saying, Satan did tell Eve, surely you will not die, but she did die mm. as a result of what, mm. he, what Adam and Eve both did. They did die mm-hmm. in that day, too. But anyway... It's what I'm saying is, is God's timing and not ours. It could be come someday that all these mountains will suddenly go into the sea because people will keep believing that it's going to happen. We don't know. We're, but of course, it, it was very symbolic, right? Of what we want to talk about tonight. Right, right. So, what is God talking to us about? A mountain. He's talking yeah. to us about our mountains. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, there's one thing that I'm very guilty of, unbelief. Mm-hmm. I found that out over the past couple of weeks. You know, we go to the Lord and we ask for things, but we have all these we have all this junk in the way. You know, we got the boulders in the backpack you yeah, guys have mm-hmm. talked about and all that stuff. And so we got all this, I do, I got all this junk in the way. And then I'm, I want and seek the Lord for things. And he says, okay, but... We got to get rid of this junk that's in the way, and we have to deal with this thing called unbelief. Bef- you know, before you are ready for me to address what you want me to address, and that's fair, and that's real. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, the Lord, you know, sometimes, you know, Kat, my wife Kathy and I had this big discussion um, this past weekend, and it was it was a great discussion about you know why does the Lord grant certain things to some people and not to others or why are certain people healed and others aren't and it's a very touchy discussion and very 
a powerful discussion because we've all experienced situations in, 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 in our lives where we've asked for things that we feel like the Lord has not uh, answered us and, and those sorts of things. And the truth is that nobody, I feel like nobody truly understands all the answers and understands everything that the, about the Lord's timing and, and things like that. But so often we have too much junk in between us and Him that if we were to address that he would answer our prayers. And it, and even beyond that, it's not that he doesn't answer our prayers because I believe that he does. It's our unbelief that stops us from receiving them. Hmm. Or stops us short. No, it stops us short, yeah. Yep, absolutely. You know, there's a thing that I've used this before so many times. <clears throat> the largest vein of gold that was ever found in history was found six inches beyond where the got previous guy stopped digging. Six mm. inches beyond where he stopped digging. He finally gave up. If he'd have gone six inches more, a couple of shovels, mm-hmm. he'd have hit the biggest load there ever was that was found. So we need to be careful not to fall short in our prayers and say, okay, I guess this isn't going to happen. And no matter what it is, for healing, um, for salvation for someone Mm -hmm. i've been praying for the same person for 22 years now right and i'm not giving up Mm -hmm. i I will pray for this person until the day i die Mm -hmm. that this person will find salvation Mm -hmm. Hmm. that's powerful yeah i think one of the things scripture in the scripture that you read out out of mark 11 is when christ is talking he says you know, when you speak to these to this mountain or, you know, when you say to this mountain, be thrown into the sea, be uprooted, be thrown into the sea, then then it will. Mm-hmm. Well, th- that's future. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't right. say how long. Right. right. It doesn't right. say immediately. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't say. But it and even, too, we, we understand and know that there's a, a time. There's all kinds of examples in Scripture that, that talks about um, – moments in time and some some people were healed immediately with their sight and and then other times there's spiritual activity that took place and it extended things out a couple of days or a couple of weeks or mm-hmm. or whatever it is and 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 Jesus did say that it will and and that will is is future it is coming mm-hmm. but that's also tied to not doubting mm-hmm. right and so even though something may not happen immediately that doesn't mean that you doubt and lose the faith. That means that you right. hold on even tighter to it and and believe even more so because it may take a little bit longer than what you might want. Mm-hmm. Right. Or that what you might expect. Right. Exactly. But that, that, that part's in that verse, too. There's a whole lot in that verse mm-hmm. that can be unpacked. But that part of... Holding on, believing, not letting go, not doubting, like what you said, Phil... But knowing that what you believe and have spoken is coming. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the reason Jesus said this, I believe, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, is he was trying to teach us authority. Mm-hmm. The authority that we have to speak to our situations, mm-hmm. to our mountains. Mm-hmm. If he wanted to, at that very moment, he could have picked up a mountain and thrown it into the sea. But that wasn't what he was looking for. No. Because imagine how many people would have followed him then yeah, for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he said, you can do this, means that now you got to follow him, work with him, build your relationship with him, and let him teach you and guide you in how to say to that mountain, uproot yourself and be thrown into the sea. Mm-hmm. And when we follow him, we learn that from him, from the gift that he gave us, the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So he was teaching us, like you said, Ian, about the future. Mm-hmm. And just a quick side note, I, I we saw in our men's group Monday night, we saw a video about why you can trust the Bible. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. I, I really highly recommend everybody watch the teaching on the Holy Bible by the Church of the Highlands. Uh, Pastor Chris Hodges, I think, is that his name? Chris yeah. Hodges. If you search for Church of the Highlands, look for the Holy Bible. It was in January of 2022. The third one was just blew me away. 
not that I didn't believe the Bible, but I can't, I walked away from that thinking, how can you not believe if you watch that? Mm-hmm. But what I'm getting at is that just further solidified my faith and started to remove doubts, not about the Bible, just in general. Mm-hmm. Because if God p- took this much time to show the truth of the Bible, what else can he do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, when you... When you gain faith in one area, that encompasses so many other areas. Mm -hmm. It's not just, okay, now Phil believes the Bible. It's Phil believes there's going to be healing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be change. There's going to be people that are going to come to know the Lord that you would never have thought Mm -hmm. are going to come to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that. Yeah, we are. And we are seeing that, yes. And we're going to see it in greater measure. Mm Mm-hmm. I believe. I heard one cool thing that really stuck with me is keep the plug plugged in. Mm. You know, like you were talking about a moment ago about just the timing. We don't, we never know the timing of when the Lord is going to, you know, work um, for us. But keep the plug plugged in. You know, don't fall away in your faith. And and to me, that just. I've been thinking on that for the last several days because it's just been like, man, that is so good. Just to hmm. keep the plug plugged in. Wait for Him. And, you know, the other thing, too, that I've learned a lot of times is sometimes the Lord answers your prayer immediately. It just doesn't get to you. Like, you, Ian, you and I were texting last night about mm-hmm. Daniel, about Daniel yeah. 9 and 10, about, you know, uh, you know, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but like the, the his first prayer was answered in three minutes and the second one was in three weeks. Right. Is mm-hmm. that, does that sound yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And it's like there was a reason for that. And, um, you know, maybe he didn't know it at the time or maybe he wasn't aware of it at the time. But I think it's a it's a powerful thing to where, um, you know, sometimes we just have to wait. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and it's a, it's more than it's it's so much more than just healing. It's it's no matter what, if you're going through financial situations or family situations or whatever it is that you're praying for, just keep the plug plugged in. You might hear a sermon on that sometime, because the reason I say that is years ago, I was twenty years old, I think. I wasn't really walking with the Lord. I believed, but I wasn't walking. No, there's no not really about it. I wasn't walking with the Lord, okay? Well, let's not try to give Phil some self, you know, some pride issue here. No, I wasn't walking with the Lord. But I was in college, and I saw um, a sermon, I guess it was. We had a – somebody came in and was speaking to whomever wanted to come. Mm-hmm. And I went to it, mm-hmm. and it blew me away. And he talked about keeping the plug plugged in. Hmm. Wow. And I've always wanted to do a sermon on that. Now that you bring it up and reminded me of it, I just might do that. So you should. You'll see something about that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the other thing, too, it's, I think one of you guys touched on it. It's, you know, when we speak to our mountain, we're, we're given that authority through the death of Jesus on the cross. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we can, pray to, we can pray to God for things, but there are certain things that, and I don't fully understand this. Maybe you guys do, but... I'm learning that there are certain things that, that God has already promised us. Oh, yeah. We don't have to keep at repeating and asking. He's already promised us. It's just we have to speak to the problem. There you go. And, and it's almost like God has already taken care of it. It's just we have to kind of catch up. Exactly. It speaks to the promise, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's okay to say to God, hey, you promised this. And that's why I am speaking this or asking for this. And because it's not like it's rubbing God's nose in it. He can't do that. He knows what he said. Mm-hmm. But it's showing, it's doing two things. It's showing your faith in believing this promise. Mm-hmm. But it's also letting the enemy know, you can't touch me now. Mm-hmm. I'm walking in the authority of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Right. Away with you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Really good. It's really good. It's great reminders. Um, but to speak, yeah, to speak to the problem, and, and I think that's that's key also. It, it is for me. I'll just put it from, from my standpoint. You know, the, the speaking is key um, because I, I've, I have, and I'm sure you guys have, and 
and and those of us those of you listening and watching you know may have as well but but you see different people yelling and screaming and smacking people in the head the forehead and that kind of stuff as far as moving mountains and casting out mm-hmm. and speaking to mm-hmm. problems and well not speaking at them but yelling at problems and yeah. um, and even you know we, we talk about you know that certain things can be commanded because we do have that authority um, but when when Jesus is talking even in that verse he says to speak not to yell mm-hmm. not to scream not to but just to just to speak and and oftentimes you know and I know we've been all all in situations when when you're talking to someone in a position of authority that when they speak that in itself is louder than if they were yelling mm. and yes. and I think it's really important to not lose your senses, so to say, when you're yelling at your problems, yeah. but that you speak. And when you speak in authority, then you're speaking with, um, from a position of, of peace mm-hmm. and confidence because mm-hmm. of who you are, and that you know that whatever you're speaking to has to obey what's being said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so I think the way of going about, even even the way of going about speaking and doing it is important. Mm. Um, I think in that verse that, that Jesus does tell us how to. And I think that in itself, to speak to what you're dealing with, to, to position yourself and to know and have that confidence in heart and mind of who you are, whose you are, what power you've been given, the authority that you've been given, and then in confidence, speak to the problem and speak the promise. Mm-hmm. And those things come out, and spiritually, whatever is in front of us has to obey. Mm-hmm. And there again, it's up, in, up to God as far as the timing, mm-hmm. but to speak to it, to step into it, and and talk about the issue at hand mm-hmm. in confidence, in belief, without doubting, knowing that God is going to fulfill the promise that He's given you about the problem that you're facing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow, that's, that's really good. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when Jesus spoke to Lazarus to come out of the grave, He didn't scream. No, he spoke. Mm-hmm. Right, rise, and, mm-hmm. and that w- that was to death. Yeah, in the boat, he spoke to the, the storm. storm. That's I right, mean, and, and we can go through. We can start pulling all of these things out, and going, okay, wow, the, these are a lot of different um, quote unquote mountains. Yeah. you know, these are a lot of mm-hmm. different issues and problems that that Christ spoke to. Mm-hmm. You know, there were some things that well, when he stooped down and drew in the sand, yeah. he didn't even speak. I mean, you know, so it's one of those things to where Jesus always held that position of authority, but he displayed that authority in in such a fashion that it wasn't like he looked like he was the one losing his mind. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, a lion doesn't need to roar for us to know it's a lion. That's right. 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 That, that That's a right. great point. Jesus. That's, that's a great point. Jesus is Jesus. Whether he yells or whispers, mm-hmm. you know, or draws in the sand. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and you know what? And so are we. Now, now, don't get me wrong, you know, people getting healed or, you know, this, the problems being removed and, and those kind of things, you know, it is exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, it is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can't get lost in thinking that my voice level. And my voice tone gives me more power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you saying then that demons are not deaf? I'm just kidding. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's we even do it. We've done it, you know. And, and, and sure. there are times when, you know, we may get louder because we need to make our point. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That's it's a human trait. Futile. Mm-hmm. It's futile. Yeah, it is. It is. It's futile. 
Mm-hmm. So there's just a balance. There's a balance there between the excitement of seeing what God's doing and, you know, those kind of things, too. But then also, well, man, if I yell louder, then the demon's going to hear me better. Yeah. And he's going to obey. You know, it's that kind of stuff. And sometimes people get louder to voice, to bolster their own confidence. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, sure. there's a number of different things. It just gets back to even in that verse, you know, if you believe in your heart. Mm-hmm. And that that's such the key is is what's happening in my heart that I speak at the level or tone that I'm using. Mm -hmm. Am I fearful? Therefore, I'm going to speak louder (laughs) to boost my confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's a lot of things going on in us as we work through these things and as we practice, because that's one of the biggest things to really learn how faith works is to practice it. Mm -hmm. So we all have to at some point go, okay, what's my mountain? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. What is what am I facing mm-hmm. that I need to grow my faith in? And then you got to practice. Yeah. And you know, you can also ask God to show you because I really I have grown so much by asking God to show me put something in my path, do something to help me grow in faith. Now, it's not like it's very similar to what the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. Well, it's because they were asking that from a question of doubt, if you ask me. I mean, they were doubting, so I said increase our faith. But what I'm saying is, I know God will provide. So I was like, God, help me, give me something that I can't deny it so that it helps my faith not waver and basically eliminates doubt mm-hmm. in the end. Mm-hmm. And he's done that. Many times Mm -hmm. throughout my life, many, many times. I could probably write a book about it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is don't be afraid to ask God, tell him, here's where I feel like I'm falling short, Lord. I I doubt too much. What can we do to increase so I don't doubt as much? Mm -hmm. He's going to help you. If you ask, he will help because that's building that relationship. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's good That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, really relationship. Good. And you know, mm-hmm. you know, the awesome thing about God is He puts things in order that we don't understand oh, yeah. <laughs> in our own lives. Things we don't even see in ourselves or understand about ourselves. And we're we're out here on step ten. We're asking Him for step ten, and He's like, okay, but let's walk through one, two, three, four. Let's get to that. And you don't even understand. We don't even understand that we've got all this stuff in the way that He wants to lead us through. So like, we get we get out ahead of ourselves Mm -hmm. we get disoriented we get out of sorts we get frustrated and impatient and all those things because he's like i'll get you here but first understand this 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 you and that's the beautiful thing about god is that he he puts it in order and sometimes we have to understand that yeah yeah Yeah. that's exactly right Mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly right it's just like what you were talking about chad out of daniel 9 and 10 that pause that difference between the three minutes and the three weeks um you know the the key thing is is what happened is the prince of persia stepped in to that battle so you know there's a battle that you know the answer was given from heaven and all of a sudden the angel and the prince of persia the demonic force the principality Mm -hmm. um they they got into it because the the angel was coming into persia to come talk to daniel to give him the answer and the prince of persia is like not right now and so this battle ensues and this battle takes place does daniel know no but he he's doing the one thing that he knew that he should be doing, and that was fasting. Mm-hmm. You know, and so he's actually becoming stronger, and his faith is going to grow right. out of all of this. So that you know that that takes right. us into Romans eight. You know, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And so Daniel obviously is loving the Lord, but this battle is taking place, and and that is time, and that makes us wait, mm-hmm. or you know. It, in power to be patient. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes the, the answers come right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. But there's this battle going on because it's like at points, does the enemy know when answers are coming? Mm-hmm. Does the enemy know when when the healings are going to take place or the mountains are going to move? And sometimes there's a battle there and, and we engage that. Mm-hmm. And so we engage that fight by just praying or fasting or whatever it is that the Lord puts on our hearts mm-hmm. um, to do 
with him and to build that relationship Mm -hmm. even further Mm -hmm. as answers Mm -hmm. are on their way. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Very good. And it's a segue into the spiritual warfare that, you know, the upcoming thing that, you know, the the conference. And, and man, that, that to me is like 50 miles wide and 50 miles deep, the spiritual warfare. Oh, man, yeah. Mm. Because there's just so much about it that I don't understand. And then, like, so many good questions come up about that. We could have hours long yeah mm-hmm. uplifts or maybe maybe not appropriate for uplift necessarily yeah. i mean it can be uplifting what i guess but yeah. you know it's like it's just that is just there's so much we don't understand mm-hmm. that's taking place and even the tempo of it is increasing yeah mm-hmm. the spiritual warfare and we're going to see that more and more you know um, we know what times we live in uh, that's i don't think a secret to anybody and the tempo of things in the spiritual world is just increasing faster and faster all the time. And it's confusing and difficult for us. But that's where the relationship with our relationship with the mm-hmm. Lord is key in keeping plugged in and keeping in the faith and casting away. And we need to all work on our unbeliefs. And we need to, you know, really build our faith, like you guys talked about, yeah. because. Uh, the spiritual warfare is fast and furious. It's not going to back down. We it, know that. it isn't. And, and even, I don't remember the, the reference at all where it is in Scripture. Phil, if you do, please jump in. But it's when, when the, the young boy is, is dying and, and the, the man comes to Christ and mm-hmm. he says, you know, I, you know do you, the, the context is, you know, do you believe back and forth? And, mm-hmm. and the man says, yes. I believe, but help, help my, my unbelief. Right, yeah. but help my unbelief. Yeah. And so that's one of the things too, Chad. It, understanding that as things are spiritually have accelerated, mm-hmm. and and yes, the warfare and the enemies ramped up, and, and people can feel the pressures. They can see it. You know, it's in anywhere you turn. You know, the headlines and stuff, and you see that. But but that's because God is is really on the move and he is grabbing hearts and so the enemy is is afraid Mm -hmm. and so their side is really ramping up Mm -hmm. in this process though we because of what we're involved with in our relationship with the lord so that we're in this war this spiritual war that that things begin to squeeze us Mm -hmm. and so then we realize yes i i had faith and belief for this Mm -hmm. But I don't have belief and faith for this. Mm-hmm. And so we have we oftentimes don't think of this. Why don't we ask for more belief, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. like that man did? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it goes back to, you know, it's a prayer that a good father wants his children to have. So why wouldn't he answer that? Mm-hmm. So just God help my unbelief. Give me more belief. I, you know, God, I am falling into doubt so quickly, but I need your help to n- not let that happen. Mm-hmm. Grow my belief so that I can speak to this mountain, to my problem, to my issue, so that I can speak to the promise, mm-hmm. which was a great point you brought up, Phil. Yeah. But to speak to that promise as well. In belief, and and God will answer it. Mm-hmm. He w- you, you'll be shocked at how God pulls that together for you and increases your faith to the point where you'll go. I, I don't even. I just have more faith. Right. I just. I have more confidence to believe for this mm-hmm. when I only could believe for this small amount. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So ask. Mm-hmm. Just ask for it. Mm-hmm. My dad used to tell me I would make a mountain out of a molehill. Mm. But what God does is he takes that mountain and turns it into a molehill, something a lot easier to to handle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, don't be afraid that, you know, this is too big for me. It's a big mountain. (laughs) I'm not talking about a little mountain. It's a huge mountain. Okay. Let God bring it back down then Mm -hmm. with what you're saying. Ask for that belief and it'll get shrunk. And you're like, I got this now. You can kick it away. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, throw it into the sea. Yeah. Let's be done with it. Exactly. Move on. Yeah. That's really good. But yeah, ask. Ask for the ask for the belief um that will will increase your faith and and decrease your doubt. Mm-hmm. Um speak to those mountains and and move 
the mountains and move on, move forward, move into that deeper relationship with Christ, um, move into a, a greater authority, mm-hmm. greater confidence mm-hmm. that we have and can have yeah. to, to live mm-hmm. this Christian life and, and the life ahead of us and, and become what God's designed us to become. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to time here, but I want to throw out one final thought to let you guys can throw out final thoughts too. But don't say just because my church doesn't do that, that that's, I don't do that. Mm. The days are coming when churches are going to buy into this more. Churches are going to believe this more. Mm. Churches are going to do this mm. more. Not just individual churches. I mean, in general, faiths, denominations, however you want to say it, are going to be buying into this more because God is pouring it out more. Mm-hmm. You know, as you said, Chad, the spiritual world is really in high gear. And just... Don't put new wine into old wineskins. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And don't let your church hold you back. Yes. I mean, you know, the Lord's calling individuals. Uh, now, we do things in unison. We work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't let four walls hold you back. I mean, and that doesn't mean you have to change the church you go to or whatever. But when you feel exactly. the Lord calling you and if the Lord's giving you gifts and, and, and talents and, and things like that, Put them to use. Receive them, and yeah. then, and then he will lead you on how to how who to work with, yeah. and and we're, and we're already seeing it. We're seeing walls break down. People from different churches working together and teaming together mm-hmm. on things mm-hmm. like that. Just don't let don't don't be a minimalist <laughs> when it comes to your yeah. to to your, in your spiritual walk and, yeah. and 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 all that. Just you know, work with other people and and kind of build bridges. That's what this is about. Mm. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Any final thoughts, Ian? Ask. Just ask. I, I mean, yeah. which we've talked about several times before, but yeah, yeah. Just you know, as a just as a quick recap, you know, just speak. It, it's it, you know, in, if speak to things, you don't have to yell and scream. I, there may be times that it just comes out that way, and that's that's all good. But it's not the volume that removes the problem. It, it's the faith. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and it's moving yeah. in your authority and your and um the confidence that God gives you. And and if it's if it's lacking, which I ask for this all the time, you know, help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. I, I run into stuff all, a lot that I'm just like, oh man, this is okay. All right, Lord, this is a great place for you to show up. You know, that kind of thing. It's just like, but help me to walk through this with you. And and do just hold on to that faith and know that even if it doesn't happen right now hold on to the faith because it's a promise that it will Mm -hmm. and hold on to that promise hold on to that speak to your problem and hold on to your promise Mm -hmm. and and god will be and do who he says he is Mm -hmm. for each one of us Mm -hmm. yeah go out there and move mountains yeah that's right yeah exactly yeah and let us know what happens because i would love to hear your stories and your testimonies absolutely about what god is doing and how you are seeing this Maybe for the first time or in greater measure than you ever had before. But, man, we would love to hear about that stuff and, and just rejoice and praise with you on it. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, that's all we got time for tonight. All righty. It's been another great episode. It, it has. Was. Yes. Yeah. It has. Very encouraging and uplifting mm-hmm. and hopefully empowering, too, yes. to get out there and be and do. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Will you guys be here next week? Yes. All right. Absolutely. Full show again next week. We'll see you then. Have a good evening.